I can shout, but so those without a voice can be heard. These were the words of Malala Yousafzai upon becoming the youngest person to win the Nobel Peace Prize in 2014. The founder of the Nobel Prize, Alfred Nobel, is Swedish chemist, entrepreneur, and inventor. Speaking of inventors, the guy who created Knock Knock Jokes should get a Nobel Prize. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred Nobel, born in 1833, owned 355 patents, including ways to prepare gunpowder and method for blasting nit nitroglycerin. In the years following, Nobel and, his, Nobel and his father won the Letterstead Award, setting the criteria for the Nobel Prize. It's a common belief that he created the Nobel Prize because dynamite, which he created, was used in war, and it killed people. So he made the Nobel Prize to make up for the guilt he felt because the way dynamite was used, which was not its intended use. And when he died, he left his fortune to the foundation, which he was over $265 million. Only 1,300 guests can be seated at the Blue Hall in Stockholm. It's been held there since 1934. Originally, soups like Tortue Claire were served. The menu has a touch of Scandinavia, and the dress code is strictly formal. Men wear white tie and tails, and ladies wear an evening gown. They dress to look like royalty, but also wearing your national costume is an alternative. Each prize consists of a medal, diploma, and cash reward. Each diploma is created by Swedish and Norwegian artists, calligraphers, and the King of Sweden presents the awards himself. The Nobel Peace Prize. The Nobel Peace Prize is one of the six categories of Nobel Prizes given out to people or organizations that uh, get one of the three criteria. The most or best work to increase friendship and union between nations, the, aboli the abolition of, or reduction of standing armies, and promoting or holding peace. On the right, you see Alfred Nobel and the founder the founder of the prizes. Some facts in history about the Nobel Peace Prize is that it's been awarded to 129 Nobel laureates since 1901, and it is awarded by five people chosen by the Parliament of Norway. The International Committee of the Red Cross has won three times in 1917, 1944, and 1963, and the Office of the, High United, of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees has won twice, in 1954 and 1981. The Norwegian Nobel Committee received 273 different valid nominations this year of individuals and organizations for the Nobel Peace Prize. 68 of these were organizations and 205 were people. On the right, you see Martin Luther King Jr., one of the most popular winners of the Nobel Peace Prize, and he won in 1964 for his work with civil rights and social justice. The winner of the Nobel Peace Prize in 2015 was the National Dialogue Quartet for its uh, decisive contribution in the building of a pluralistic democracy in Tunisia after the, revo or the Jasmine Revolution of 2011. And a pluralistic democracy is a democracy where various religious ethnic, racial, and political groups are allowed to thrive in a single society. The National Dialogue Quartet consists of four organizations, which is the Tunisian General Labor Union, the Tunisian Confederation of Industry, Trade, and Handicraft, and the Tunisian Human Rights League, and the Tunisian Order of Lawyers. These are my sources that I use for my presentation, and please enjoy the next presentation.
Nobel Prize in Literature. The said interest shall be divided into five equal parts, which shall be appointed as follows. One part to the person who shall have produced in the field of literature the most outstanding work in an ideal direction. This is from the will of Alfred Nobel. When deciding who would receive the Nobel Prize in Literature this year, the Nobel Foundation received 259 proposals, 198 of which were nominated. 36 of these were first-time nominees. Our winner was Svetlana Aleksevich. She won for her polyphonic writings in a monument to suffering and courage in our time. She is from the Ukraine, and she's an investigative journalist, also a nonfiction writer. Her first writing was, in, was released in 1985, Wars on Womanly Face. This book is a collection of monologues speaking about World War, th or one, uh, sorry, World War II through the eyes of women who survived it. In fact, most of Svetlana's works are historical events through the through the eyes of people and given perspectives not traditionally written about. These unique st this unique style of writing is what won her the Nobel Prize. There have been 108 literature prizes awarded between 1901 and 2015. 14 women have won this prize. Four prizes have been divided between two people. The youngest prize winner, 42 years old, Rudyard Kipling won in 1907. The oldest won in 2007, named Doris Lessling, was 88 years old. Real people speak in my book about the main events of the age such as the war, the uh, Cher Chernobyl disaster and the downfall of the great empire, but I don't record a dry history of events or facts. I'm writing a history of human feelings. Thank you. The 2015 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was awarded jointly to William C. Campbell and Satoshi Omura for their discovery of a drug that treats infections caused by ringworm parasites, and to Yu Yu Tu for her discovery of a treatment for malaria. Campbell is an Irish biologist and parasitologist who now resides in the U.S. Omura is a biochemist hailing from Japan, and Tu is a Chinese pharmaceutical chemist. As they worked on the same research, Campbell and Omura both received about $300,000, as well as a medal and diploma, while two received $600,000. However, the contributions of each laureate were undeniably important. The three all made deeply impressive advancements in medicine and wholly, wholly deserved to receive the Nobel Prize. William C. Campbell and Satoshi Omura are credited with discovering avermectin, a drug that has proven to be extremely efficient in killing parasites. The drug was a component in cultures of the bacteria group Streptomyces, which Omura mass cultured and narrowed down to the 50 strands that seemed the most promising in combating parasitic diseases. Campbell analyzed these cultures and found what was later purified and named avermectin to be incredibly effective against parasites and animals. The drug was chemically modified into a compound known as ivermectin, which was tested on humans affected by parasitic infections and proved to be as efficient as was hoped. It's been used... Oh, dang. <laughs> It's been used to treat and drastically reduce the mortality rates of diseases caused by ringworm parasites, such as river blindness and lymphatic filariasis, which dominate many less developed areas of the world. 
UU2 is responsible for discovering artemisinin, a highly effective treatment for malaria. Two turned to herbal remedies found in ancient texts to discover the extract from the Artemisia annua plant, which was thought to be an incredible treatment for malaria until results of their testing became inconsistent. However, not losing faith in the promising plant, she ended up successfully extracting the active component in Artemisia annua, which was later named artemisinin. This proved to be remarkably effective due to the agents that it contains, which are able to kill malaria parasites early in their development. The contributions from each of these scientists have revolutionized the field of medicine, the drugs being distributed around the world and saving hundreds of thousands of lives. These discoveries have made truly remarkable advancements that others can hopefully continue to build on until these devastating parasitic diseases are no longer a major global concern. However, until then, we can continue to recognize and appreciate the tremendous impact that Campbell, Omura, and Tu have made on the health and well-being of people worldwide. One moment, please. <laughs> and this is my story. I was <laughs> okay, we are ready to go. Suggestions? What? It's ready. Yes, that does make me 183 years old today. Anyways, I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, to my parents, Emmanuel and Carolina Nobel. After studying chemistry in my youth, I started my own ammunition factory. During that time, my brother Emil died in a tragic accident involving explosive gunpowder. His death inspired me to create an explosive that was more reliable and safer to use. I soon invented and patented dynamite. Now, I did make bank off this dynamite stuff, but while my intentions were good, there were those who saw my creation as a tool for killing other humans. My fortune began to not mean very much to me as my reputation began to slide towards more of a butcher rather than an innovative scientist. I realized that this legacy simply would not do, and I had to find a way to clear my name and my conscience. So towards the end of my life, I set aside a large chunk of my estate to create what is known today as the Nobel Prize. The prize recognizes and honors men and women for their work in the fields of physics, chemistry, medicine, economics, literature, and peace. Regretfully, I must inform you that I died of a stroke on December 10th, 1896, at the age of 63. But I left nearly 278 million U.S. dollars to fund the prizes awarded to the selected winners. But don't think that any random Joe guy off the street can waltz up and pick up their winning. No, only specific people can win my prizes. And I quote myself here, I endow prizes to those who shall have conferred the greatest benefit to mankind. End quote. The kinds of people that win my awards are innovators, creators, and people who change the world with their discoveries and inventions like the two men who won this year's Nobel Prize for Physics, Takaki Kajita from Japan and Arthur B. McDonald from Canada. These men were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for their discovery that shows that neutrinos have mass. Now, for those of you who aren't as familiar with neutrinos, 
They are the second most abundant particles in the universe. In this room alone, there are over a billion neutrinos that travel at the speed of light. Created by nuclear reactions, these microscopic particles are so tiny that they travel through us and the Earth around us without us noticeably interacting with them. This year's prize is awarded to the scientists that have discovered that these tiny particles can change their identities, proving that they have mass. All really quite interesting, I know. This discovery can eventually change our view on the sun, the Earth, and even our entire universe. Crazy, right? Kajina and McDonald received a medal, a personal diploma, and a cash sum of nearly a million dollars to split between the two. It's people like Kajita and McDonald that have changed the world of science and have helped society take a huge step to obtaining a greater understanding of our universe. They are making the world a better place and they are entirely deserving of my award. Sincerely, Alfred Bernard Noble. The 2015 Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to three researchers for their work on DNA repair. Those three are Thomas Lindahl, Paul Modric, and Aziz Singh Char. Aziz Singh Char was born in Savar, Turkey, but has spent most of his professional life in the United States and is now at the University of North Carolina as a, prof as a professor of biochemistry and biophysics. Paul Modric is from Raton, New Mexico, and is currently at Duke University of Medicine in North Carolina, taking part in the Duke Cancer Institute. He has a PhD from Stanford and a BS degree from MIT. Thomas Lindahl is from Stockholm, Sweden, and studied at Karolinski Institute, and is currently working at the Francis Crick Institute as well as Clare Hall Laboratory in England. Their work has provided fundamental knowledge of how a living cell functions and is, for instance, used for the development of new cancer treatments. The trio of men this year that were awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry discovered how cells repair our DNA. First, I'll give you guys a run through on what DNA is. DNA, also known as deoxyribonucleic acid, is a material that carries the archives of our own body's functions. Each piece of information is stored on its own part of DNA called a gene. DNA is constantly damaged by sunlight and other UV, UV rays that can come from digital devices. But our cells found a way to repair DNA to prevent defects in our body. During the cell reproductive cycle at certain checkpoints, mechanisms make sure the DNA has maintained its integrity before moving on. He discovered that people born with defects in the repair system will develop skin cancer when exposed to sunlight. As John said, DNA can be damaged by everyday things, such as radiation coming off your phone, UV rays, etc., etc. The body has evolved to and developed ways to fix these damaged sections though. There are two types of direct, uh, the, there are two types of repair processes. The first type is direct reversal and the second is excision repair. I, I will focus on excision repair because it is most common. Excision repair cuts out the damaged section then uses proteins and enzy enzymes to create a copy of the section to replace the damaged section. This copy then fixes the DNA so it is fully functional. The reason these men have won the Nobel Prize is because this discovery could lead to things such as cures for cancer. Thank you guys for your time.
First lesson of economics is scarcity. There is never enough of anything to fully satisfy all those who, all those who want it. In this quote, Thomas Sowell reveals the importance of sound economic thought and policy, henceforth acknowledging the essentiality of those that formulate ideas, conduct research, and study theories pertaining to this discipline. Known as the dismal science, economics, the study of the use of, of alternative resources, or uh, scarce resources which have alternative uses, has long been regarded as dull and uninteresting by a great portion of the public. Nonetheless, due to the profound implications and applications of economics in areas ranging from the national debt to poverty in third world countries to the price of gasoline, the Nobel Foundation began to award the Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences beginning in 1969. There have been 47 winners. The notable ones include Frederick Hayek in 1974, Milton Friedman in 1976, George Stigler in 1982, John Nash Jr. in 1994, and Paul Krugman in 2008. The 2015 winner, was announced last month, was Angus Deaton of Princeton University. Honored for his research and analysis concerning consumption, poverty, and welfare, Deaton has made large contributions to the way economists model and, and analyze trends in their relationships between consumer purchases and income levels, leading the transition from aggregate-based data to individualized methods of studying these statistics. He has also made contributions to the fields of human welfare and behavior, examining the effects of different tendencies and policies on these subjects. Mr. Dean is a prime example of the hard work and dedication required to win a Nobel Prize. We can, also be, we can all be grateful for his pursuit of the advancement of economical sciences over the past five decades, as he has increased our chances of prosperity in the process.